the reviews are in on the Intel i5-11400 and they're pretty good. But looking at the whole platform, including cooling, motherboards, memory, and performance, is it enough to be declared the best budget gaming CPU right now? We're gonna go through all of this so you can decide if the i5-11400 belongs in your next gaming build. Coming right up. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. Today we've got a spicy one, especially if you're an AMD fan. That's because we're looking at the i5-11400 and its slightly cheaper variant, the i5-11400F, without integrated graphics. Now, you've already probably seen some of the reviews that declare the i5-11400 the best budget gaming CPU based solely on its performance and its CPU cost. But that's not good enough for us. Today we're gonna to take a look at the entire platform, including motherboards, memory, cooling, and performance against the Ryzen 3600 and Ryzen 5600X. And that way, if you decide that the i5-11400 is the right CPU for you, you can go out and confidently get what you need to put a build together. Except maybe a graphics card because it's still 2021 and of course we're still in GPU hell, so I don't know what to tell you. Of course, that's what this channel is all about. It's about getting you the best price or performance in your builds. If that's the kind of content you wanna support, remember to like the video, subscribe, and click the bell icon. Let's get into it. So let's briefly go through the budget CPU market right now and talk about the options before diving into the Intel i5-11400. Right now the budget CPU market is extremely limited and Intel is pretty much the only game in town below $200 US. About a year ago this was actually a pretty vibrant space with the four core Ryzen 3 3100 for about $100, the reintroduced 12 nanometer six core Ryzen 1600 AF for just $85, the six core Ryzen 2600 and a discounted Ryzen 5 3600 selling for as little as $160 US, all providing plenty of bang for your buck and helping to cement AMD's dominance of the budget market. Now alongside those entries were the four core eight thread i3, 10100, and 10100F, selling at around $100 US, and the i5, 10400, and 10400F, selling for around $160 US. What a difference a year makes. The Ryzen 3100 is now just as hard to find as the, its vaporware brother, the 3300X. The 1600 AF and 2600 are retailing north of $176, sometimes even more. And the 3600 is having stock issues and can often only be purchased for $20 to $50 over its $200 MSRP. Meanwhile, the i3-10100 has become somewhat scarce and has jumped up in price, leaving just a 10400 to compete at the $150 to $160 price point. So given the state of the market, the 11400 doesn't really have to do anything more than bring good performance, stay in stock, and sell for around its MSRP. Sounds easy? But we all know how difficult that's been in 2021, especially if you wanna buy a graphics card. Let's jump into the performance. I've compiled data from Gamers Nexus, Hardware Unboxed via TechSpot, and Tech Power Up, and I'll include links to all of their in-depth reviews down in the video description below. But I'm not gonna make you wade through dozens of individual game and productivity graphs, let's just get right down to it. All the independent testing found that the 11400 had significantly improved on the 10400's weakness, which was productivity work. The i5-11400 actually outperforms the more expensive Ryzen 5 3600 in most productivity benchmarks and even comes close to the Ryzen 5 5600X in several of them. But it generally slots just between the two Ryzen CPUs. Of course, the reality is that very few people are gonna buy an 11400 for productivity, so let's look at the gaming performance. The performance, it's quite impressive using a high-end GPU like an RTX 3080, 6900 XT or RTX 3090 at 1080p. In hardware and box tests with a 10 game benchmark using an RTX 3090, the 11400 was 13% faster than the Ryzen 5 3600, but the Ryzen 5 5600X beat the 11400 by 11%. Interestingly enough, the 11400 generally outpaces its 10th generation cousin, the 10400, However, there are a handful of games where the 10400 actually beats the 11400, like Star Wars Squadrons and Rainbow Six Siege. 
but generally the 11400 was 2.5% faster than the 10400. Looking at the 1440p results from Tech Power Up, who tested with an RTX 3080 GPU, we can see the 11400's margins shrink to just 9% ahead of the Ryzen 5 3600 and just 2.5% behind the Ryzen 5 5600X. Of course, very few people who are buying an RTX 3080 or RTX 3090 are likely going to opt for a budget CPU like the i5-11400. Instead, you're more than likely going to see the CPU paired with either a budget GPU like a GTX 1660 Super, which basically have all been abducted by miners at this point, or what we now call a mid-range GPU like a $400 RTX 3060. And if you were to somehow get your hands on one of those mythical budget mid-range GPUs, the performance difference between the Ryzen 5 3600 i5-11400 and even the Ryzen 5 5600X will likely be the same as any of those processors are going to be enough to maximize the GPU. It's important to note that all the testing was done with the power limits turned off, either automatically with a high-end B560 or Z590 motherboard or done manually in the motherboard BIOS. And you're definitely going to want to do the same thing though the be benefits are primarily in the productivity tasks that are going to fully utilize all the CPU cores. Speaking of turning off the power limits, you're definitely going to want to buy at least a budget aftermarket cooler for the Intel i5-11400, as the included box cooler just wasn't good enough in any of the testing. While Intel has included the nicer looking all black stock cooler, the problem is that it's still just terrible especially for such a power hungry part. So I'd recommend at a minimum getting a three to four heat pipe, mid tower cooler like the Gamex 400, Cooler Master Hyper 212, id cooling 224, or the absolutely dirt cheap $25 Be Quiet Slim Rock. And don't worry about cooler compatibility with the new LGA 1200 socket motherboards as they're exactly the same for cooler installation as the LGA 1151, 1152, or 1155 boards, basically any of the older generation board. Switching over to motherboards, this is to me one of the current weaknesses of the i5-11400. It's only compatible with either the older Z490 or H470 motherboards or the new Z590 and B560 motherboards. Now, unfortunately, the older Z490 and H470 motherboards are very limited in stock and they generally go for $180 or quite a bit more, as do the Z590 boards. That really limits you to the new B560 motherboards, especially if you want to do a budget gaming build. Unfortunately, while they are generally affordable with models starting out around the $100 US mark, the cheaper boards have very stripped down features until you hit about the $140 price range and only the most expensive B560 boards feature premium audio codecs, which I know not everyone cares about, but it is disappointing to me to see this lacking in all except the most expensive boards. Right now, a lot of the boards are sold out or they have yet to be released to the US market. So the pick is quite limited for B560. A quick scan of the boards that are available and my recommendations at the budget level are the ASRock B560M Pro 4 for about $110 US, the ASUS Tough Gaming B560M Plus, and the MSI B560 Bazooka at about $140 US, and at the high end, the ASUS ROG Strix B560A for $175, which has all the premium features, including Wi-Fi 6 and a high-end audio codec and design. Links to all these products will, as always, be down in the description, and I'll add additional motherboards that I would recommend as they become available, so make sure to check those links out in the description early and often. Now, from memory, while the i5-11400 comes with a stock DDR4-3200 speed memory, any of the boards it's going to pair with are also going to allow memory overclocking, so it should just be a matter of jumping into the BIOS and turning on the memory XMP profile. Again, while you're there, remember to ensure that the motherboard power limits are disabled. I've yet to see any in-depth memory testing, but generally Intel 14 nanometer CPUs are not that memory sensitive once they get over a certain threshold speed. So for now, I'd recommend just picking up a good kit of DDR4 3200 CL16 memory, especially given this is a budget build and how much memory prices have gone up. So what's the verdict on the 11400 versus the 3600? Well, there's no denying it. The 11400 does have slightly better performance for a lower CPU price than the Ryzen 5 3600. 
Of course, the Ryzen 5 3600 is almost two years old at the time of this video, so that probably should be a given. In terms of its price to performance, Ryzen B550 boards are cheaper and they offer much better features at lower price points. And of course, if you don't care about PCIe 4.0, and frankly, at the budget gaming level, you really shouldn't, then grabbing a full featured board like the ASUS Tough Gaming B550 Plus 2 with premium audio for only $120 and pairing it with the Ryzen 5 3600 and using the perfectly adequate stock cooler, it's a compelling argument to stay with AMD in the budget category, especially since it's unlikely you're gonna have a high-end enough GPU to see any real performance differences between the two CPUs. And if you are buying a high-end GPU that would make a difference, well, let's be honest, you're also not gonna be buying an i5-11400, you're gonna be buying a high-end CPU to go with it. So right now, given that the budget market has largely been out of stock and to some extent abandoned by both Intel and AMD, it is nice to see a very solid competitor in the i5-11400. At this point, I'd call the space a tie, and it really comes down to which platform you prefer. Either way, I don't think you can go wrong with this one. That's the video today. Tell me what you thought of the overall review and what you think of the i5-11400 versus the Ryzen 5 3600. Which one would you grab? As always, if this is the kind of content that you enjoy and wanna support, remember to like the video, subscribe and click the bell icon. That way you get notified when we go live. Thank you very much and I'll catch you on the next one.